Hi everyone, in today's video, we are going to discuss about bloom filters. Let us first try to understand where are bloom filters used. So when you register yourself on Gmail for creating a new account, Gmail checks if the username already exists or not. So behind the scenes, it is using bloom filters to check if the username that you want is already used by someone or not. Similarly, when you try to access a URL on Google Chrome, Google Chrome uses Bloom filter to check if that URL is malicious or not. If it is not malicious, it will let you go ahead. Right? Bloom filter is also used by a lot of NoSQL DBs like Cassandra and HBase to find out if a record exists in a node or not. So all these systems needs a data structure which is very space efficient and which can very quickly tell them that uh, a record exists already or not. That's why Bloom filter is used. So Bloom filter is the super data structure about which we are going to discuss in this discussion. Lot of you might be thinking that why not use set or hash table instead of Bloom filter? Why do we need a fancy data structure like Bloom filter? You are right. Uh, we can use set and hash table, but Bloom filter is far more space efficient uh, than set and hash table. You will get to know about this thing in few minutes. Let us try to understand what is Bloom filter. It is a efficient probabilistic data structure which is used to test if an element already exists or not. So you can think of Bloom filter as more efficient implementation of uh, hash table or set. The use cases are usually similar. So to implement Bloom filter, we need a bit array and we need hash functions. Let us suppose we have three hash functions, h1, h2 and h3. Now let us try to understand how is Bloom filter implemented. So we have a bit array. In starting, all the bits of that array will be set to zero. We'll have three hash functions, h1, h2 and h3. Suppose we are implementing an application where we are trying to find out if the username is already used by someone or if the username can be used by a newly registering user. Let's assume we are just starting the system. So we want to store data.savvy as a username. We'll pass it through h1 hash function and it will return us 1. So we'll set the first bit to 1. Then if we pass data.savvy to h2 hash function, if it returns 4, we'll set the fourth bit to 1 and similarly for h3 we will set the 10th bit to 1. Suppose a new user comes whose name is savvy.data similarly for that user based on what h1, h2 and h3 return we will set the respective bits. If you notice for savvy.data user h1 has given output of 10 which was a output given by data.savvy for h3 hash function. Since the 10th bit was already set h1 is not trying to set that bit again. So this is how we insert the data. Now let us try to understand how do we check if a user already exists in Bloom filter or not. Suppose we want to check for data.savvy1 user. We'll pass it through a hash function h1. Suppose h1 is pointing to bit 4 and h2 is pointing to bit 8. Bit 4 is already set to 1 and bit 8 is set to 0. So we'll know that data.savvy1 doesn't exist in the Bloom filter. Depending on implementation of the Bloom filter, we can check for H3 or to make it more efficient, we can skip it also. So in this case, we'll know data.savvy1 doesn't exist in the Bloom filter. Now imagine if H2 instead of pointing to bit 8, if it was pointing to bit 10, then so even though data.savvy1 user doesn't exist, system is telling us a lie. It is giving us a false positive data.savvy1 already exists. This usually happens when most of the bits on the bit array are already set. So you need to have a big enough space of bit array to store enough number of records. Otherwise you will start getting a lot of false positives. It is also important to have right number of uh, hash functions. If you have too many hash functions, that too many hash functions will set too many bits on the array to 1. That means your bit array will fill up very quickly and you will again face the problem of lot of 
false positives. Here is a formula to find out how many hash functions usually you should use. K is the number of hash function and it is approximately equal to number of bits that you have in array divided by number of elements that you want to store in the array. So if you want to store 1 million element and you have an array of size 4 million then you can use 4 hash functions to build your bloom filter. So here are some limitations of the bloom filters. They, as we saw it gives lot of false positive when most of your array is filled. You cannot delete data from bloom filters otherwise your bloom filter will get corrupt. How does it corrupt the bloom filter? Let us see in this example. Here savvy.data and data.savvy are the two usernames which we have stored in the bloom filter. If you notice one of the hash function from both the usernames is pointing towards bit 13 which is set to 1. So if we delete user data.savvy and we reset the bits which it was pointing to which was 1, 2 and 13 then even though 13 was being used by savvy.data as part of deleting data.savvy we have reset the node bit 13 because we didn't had any way of finding out that some other data is already some other data is also using this bit right so in this process we have corrupted the bloom filter so now if somebody is trying to check if savvy.data exists in bloom filter or not they will end up thinking that savvy.data doesn't exist in the bloom filter so our bloom filter is now corrupted next limitation of bloom filter is it requires random access on the disk otherwise it will not work so here are some of the use cases of bloom filters as we discussed uh, it is used to check if the username is already used or not on a registration page. Google Chrome uses Bloom filter to find out if the link that you are, URL that you are trying to access is malicious or not. It is also used to filter out previously shown recommendations. So if you have a, a e-commerce website and you are showing recommendations on that and you want to find out whether those recommendations are already shown to this user or not, you can use bloom filters. Bloom filters are also used by NoSQL DBs and caches to find out if this specific record exists in a node or in the cache or not. They are very efficient and fast way to get a response. Here are the implementation of bloom filters. Redis has a very good implementation of bloom filter and you can find out another implementation of bloom filter on github. Let's talk about counting bloom filter. Counting bloom filters are a modification of bloom filter which enables deleting of a record in the bloom filter also. So we have a bit array along with the bit array we also maintain a counter. How does this counter help us? Let us see. Suppose we want to store user data.savvy as we store data for data.savvy so whatever bits we are setting we are increasing the counter for respective bits. So for bit 4 we have set the counter to 1 and for bit 10 we have set the counter to 1. Now we want to store savvy.data. We will pass it through h1 hash function and since it is pointing to bit 10 we will increase the counter of bit 10 to 2. Before this it was 1. Similarly for h2 we will increase the counter and similarly for h3 we will increase the counter. Now imagine you want to delete record savvy.data from the bloom filter. So whatever bits it was pointing to earlier, we will decrease the counter for that and we will reset the bits. So bit 17 will change to 0 and the counter will be also decreased by 1. Bit 14 will be changed to 0 and the counter for that also will be decreased by 1. And for bit 10, counter will be decreased by 1. Bit 10 will not be set to 0 because the counter value was more than 1. So this way we are able to delete a record from our bloom filter without corrupting the bloom filter. I hope you learned something. If you enjoyed the video, please like the video and share it with your friends. Thank you.